that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All of the buttons are on. All of my little lights are coming up and lit. It looks like we are live. Can you believe, <laughs> Sherry? This is a April 21st already. Yeah, and yesterday we had snow in Kansas. And snow, I couldn't believe it. And then all of a sudden we had sun in the evening. And if you look outside this morning, I don't know about you, but I noticed my mood was so different today because the weather yes. was different. Does that make sense? It was the like, weather. oh my gosh. Yeah, and we had the snow melted, what, by 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon? It was so funny. I took a picture of my back deck at 8 o'clock yesterday morning, and there's snow everywhere. The tr and the trees are beautiful when they have that snow on it. Those great, big, beautiful snowflakes. And I looked out there at 1 o'clock. They were all gone. And it was this, wet. <laughs> this it is was wet and rainy and drippy. <laughs> this is spring in the Midwest. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Sherry and Terry Ann. I am Terry Ann Porter, Life Coach TA. It's time to defeat those lies of negative self-talk that you tell yourself. And you can defeat those by changing your perspective. And once you do that, you will start to notice those possibilities that are right there in front of you, which will lead to pathways opening onto which you can choose to proceed in truth. My co-host is... Good morning. I'm Sherry Berger. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the owner of Here to There Consulting. And we educate business owners with those tools to balance life, business, and finances. So we can save you time and money to make you more effective and efficient. And our mission is to help you create the life and business that you deserve, having that all balanced. Welcome, welcome. I want to let people know, maybe Terry Ann can tell people, some people are coming up as Facebook user. And why is that, Terry Ann? That is because Facebook wants to try to protect some of your privacy. We are using a platform called StreamYard. If you would like your name to appear, go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook and tell it that, yes, it's okay for your name to appear so that we can see it. Could you put that in the comments or somewhere to make it easier? Look at the very top mm. of our screen. It is there. There you go. So if you just click on that, it would make it easier for you. Well, good that morning, click won't work. Morning. You're right. Look, I will go ahead and put it in as a link. I didn't think of that. I need more coffee today. Okay. I just Speaking put Speaking of coffee, I'm drinking a special drink this morning in my special cup. Because my special daughter has an espresso machine. She's telling me all about it. It was chocolate, peppermint, something. And she took this downstairs where her espresso machine is. She made me coffee and then she brings it up. And I did a bad mom moment. I said, why are you using my coffee cup? It's my brand new Grandma Sherry one and it's pink. Why? She goes, mom, I didn't want to use mine. Your espresso's in here. I just thought you guys would find that a little funny. It's one of those mom moments, right? She's almost 22. She'll be 22 next year. I mean, next Wednesday. But whose birthday is it this week, Terry Ann? Speaking of age, I want to do a special shout out to my sister, Tammy Richards. Tammy is 60, mm. six zero years old today. And I'm not going to tell you which one of us is older. <laughs> well, you're supposed to say that number. Maybe it's Sorry. six if you drop that zero. <laughs> happy, happy anyway, birthday. What are we today? What is our topic today? When to say no and when to say yes. Ooh, I have trouble with that. I know. There's some things I always, I mean, there's lots of things I want to say yes to. And then there's some things that I get feel guilted into saying yes to. I don't know about you. Can you say I yes to like everything? Guilted. Yeah, but can you say yes to everything, even if you want to? It's not possible. You know, you can do, one of my friends was telling me that her grandma used to say this to her. You can do everything, just not everything at the same time. Ooh, good. I liked that saying. I more tell people, I hate that I only have 24 hours in the day and I have so many things I want to do. But what are your priorities? Saying yes to, if I overly say yes to stuff, what am I doing, Terri-Ann? 
you are you will find yourself just in a hectic chaos. But I'm saying and nothing no. is done completely. I'm saying no to other things. That's true. Sometimes it's your own goals. Did you know that? You're saying no to your own priorities by saying yes to things that aren't because there's only 24 hours in a day. No way. How do I get more? Is there a place that I can go deposit and get an extra two or three hours? You can get more money. You cannot get more time. I try to tell people that all the time. So okay. why don't, why do we budget our money, which we need to do? This is budget lady over here, but we forget to budget our time uh -huh. and find ways to save time. Right? <clears throat> so that's, a, that's an important thing to remember mm -hmm. though. If I say yes to this, I, that does, that means I am saying no to something else. I mean, I get to see Terry Ann at nine. Well, I actually see her at nine on Wednesdays, 930 on Wednesdays. And she goes live and she talks about great stuff. I get to see her every Wednesday. Oh, wait, I get to co-host with her. But what <laughs> if you would tell somebody else that you could do something at this time? That's not going to work. And do you know how many meetings I have had to turn down because they'll say, hey, can you meet me at 930 Wednesday? And I say, nope, I cannot. I have to say no. But this, this thing about that, no, I also have in in uh, in Toastmasters we have table topics and you're giving a question and you're allowed to go with the question or take it off into a different direction. So when I say, if I were to say no, I can't meet you Wednesday at nine thirty, but you know what? I can meet you at eleven. Will that time work? See, it's not saying no; it's making it work in your priorities and your balance, right? Everyone mm -hmm. makes choices, right? That's Everyone makes choices. Mm -hmm. And if you say yes in one place, you're, something else is going to hear a no. And when you say no, then you're opening up for a yes someplace else. We talked about, we were I kind of, it was almost a joke, but it's true in my calendar where the kids knew if I said, okay, it's on my outlook, they knew it would take place. They also knew that that meant that if somebody called and said, hey, can you meet me at... I now look at my calendar and say, no, I can't. My priority is this one. See, and I don't usually say, no, I can't. I usually go, I'm available. I, I more try to redirect people to what works for me, right? If I'm trying to get somebody on my calendar, right? So that's okay to sometimes redirect. You're not really saying no. You're just redirecting to the time frame that's going to work for you. I'm curious. What are some ways to tell someone no? Now, the first thing I, I had, I was so amazed when I've learned and accepted this because I'd heard it many times. It wasn't until the day I had the mindset shift and actually accepted it. No is a complete sentence. Is it really? I don't always have to give you an explanation. And I, don't I used to have that magnet on my refrigerator that said teenagers. No is a complete sentence. But why don't oh. we have teenagers? Why don't we just say people? No is a complete sentence. Because you feel <laughs> guilty saying no. And remember I was talking about the times. There's times that I'm really good about just saying. I'm, I, I sometimes think you shouldn't say I'm sorry I can't do that. That that wouldn't work for me, or no, I can't. And in a nice way, tell them no, right? Which is mm -hmm. important. But how about those times when you over-explain why you have a no? Oh I'm wow! Just telling you when you're stressed out and you got lots going on in your life, sometimes you over-explain. So my youngest was about five, and she was in Girl Scouts, and I was being pressured by the other Girl Scout leaders that it was my t turn to take over the pack or whatever you call them. And I said, no, I can't do that. Oh, no, no. The pressure came on because it was actually my turn. It wasn't, do you want to? You need to do it. And I said, no. So then I over explained to them because I had some stuff going on with my other kids. I had a lot of stuff going on in my personal life. There was no way I could do it, Terry Ann. But then I started explaining all my personal life to these. I want to call them mean girls. They really were. They were the mean moms. Have you ever had them? And they were mm -hmm. bullying me, Terry Ann. They weren't saying, we understand. They weren't, they were like, no, 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 we didn't, you have to. 
and they were older than me and they were, you know what I'm saying? They had all this, but I over explained. That was one of those not proud moments that I went and I told them, but this kid's doing that. And this one's doing that. Why do these people that aren't even my friends need to know all my personal life? What'd you say? No is a complete sentence. No. And walking away, there's a thing called walking yes. with power. I told them over and over. No. Instead, I felt like I explained myself. And I told you that sometimes that happens when you're over, you know, I stressed, I had a, that was a stressed out year as a mom because a lot of stuff was going on with a lot of my kids, which I don't need to tell people. Right. But there was a lot going on and that was a stressed out mom year for me. And, but I didn't need to explain that. And when you get under those pressures, sometimes you just need to say no and walk away or no and get off the phone or no. And right. <clears throat> I think of it as like, if you're speaking to a salesperson, you can say no, but as long as you are standing there talking to them, you are giving them the opportunity to continue to sell you. And when you say no to someone and give an ex and continue a conversation with them, if they continue on the same topic, you're almost giving them permission. And then when you give all of your reasons why you can't, then they have, they feel many times, I think, oh, I can tell you now how to work around all that so that you will still give me what I want. Um, I like um, Linda's comment. Say you appreciate the invitation. Now is not a good time. Can we readdress it later? And end it there. That's the important thing, I think, with the word no. It's ending it there. Well, and if you're feeling pressured by people like I was giving my story, mm -hmm. I should have gotten a van and drove away. Mm -hmm. You know, I just said, no, have a great day, waved, smiled and drove away. Right. I should have said, I appreciate the fact that you guys, but really, I can't do this at this moment. And I should have walked away. So oh, I'm yeah. The best, yes. I love Lisa Tur Turkus. Have you ever read her? She's awesome. Yes, I have. I've, did, I've read a couple of her books. I haven't read that one yet. And it's right, because if we say yes to everything, even no matter how imp unimportant it is, it stops us from having that opportunity to take care of those important things. That's true, right? And you could actually be saying, like, I told you that was a busy mom year for me. I would have been saying no to my own children to say yes to helping other children. Not that you don't want to help other children. I've taught Sunday school. You know, I've done youth group stuff. And, you know, I think all that's important. And, and I believe volunteering and doing giving back to community. I mean, it makes you a balanced person, right? It's really important. But sometimes you got to say yes to your home life. Mm -hmm. Put your air mask on first. If you're not taking care of your kids, your marriage, your business, your finances, your right. And you're doing for, and it's good to do for others, but we have to put, why do they say put your air mask on before even a child when you're on a plane? And so that's about self care too, right? And that <laughs> phrase never made sense to me. I know I've got, I, because I always want to take care of others. I always felt it was selfish if I put that, Oxygen mask on myself first. I mean, I went up and helped with my but grandson. I went up and helped with my grandson for a week. And oh my gosh, he's the cutest. And I could hang out with him all day long. <laughs> but I found out that I have to go for a walk. I have to have, you know what I mean? Some yeah. space. I can't just do for others and not get, you know what I mean? Just a break. Going for a walk, I don't know about you. That is the best thing for me to do every day. I go for a walk almost every day. If I don't go for a walk, I notice my day just is not as productive. It's not, I'm not as in a good of mood. I'm not, literally, I go for a walk every day. Yesterday, I did not do my walk. Maybe I should have in the snow, but I did not. <laughs> and there's been days I've done it in the snow and a rain, and it makes a huge difference. So what is that one thing that you need to do every day, right? Oh, I also have to do my devotion every day. If I don't do my devotion and walk, and sometimes I'm even praying or walking, you know, throughout the day. What did you just share right there, Terry? Uh, Linda Parrish said, I'm so guilty of not having true hours. As long as I'm awake, I'm open. That's not fair. And I like that phrase. It's not fair to myself and my husband. See, I and say I just yes way too many times. I need to be more specific. 
I used to, have to be more like, I used to be more like that. I love my clients. Oh my gosh. And I love my friends and I love my family and I love, and I love helping others. And finally I've taught even my best friends that you can't call me after nine o'clock. And if you're going to call me after nine o'clock, uh, somebody better die or you must be bleeding or, and I won't answer the phone. Cause at nine o'clock, my husband doesn't, you know, he's a UPS driver. He doesn't get home till about seven 38. And you know, I've been in meetings after nine, Terry Ann's caught me doing that, but they were scheduled and they were planned. Right. So that's a different situation. Cause sometimes like Toastmasters will be after nine or I'll go out with friends after nine. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, but most generally nine o'clock at night is time with my husband. Mm -hmm. And he knows that and my friends know that. So guess what he feels like? He's a priority. He feels a priority. Yes. And guess what my friends say? Oh my gosh, your husband's a priority. Yeah. Okay. And he doesn't expect it of me, but I expect it of myself. Does that make sense? And I notice my marriage goes a lot better when I hang out with my husband an hour every day. Big difference, right? <clears throat> how, many, how many times do we show our family that they're not important when we say, oh, wait a minute, hold it. No, I got, I got it. There's a phone ringing. I have to go answer it. Um, no, I know I said we would go do this, but this came up once in a while. That's one thing, but family does notice pretty soon. Every time we have something planned, if something else comes up, I'm put on the back burner. So, and sometimes it feels like my yes is yes, unless something better comes along. So it used to be rude to answer the phone when you were with people. And now everybody carries their phone everywhere they go. And I have a friend of mine that we used to go walking and sometimes somebody would call me and I might answer the phone or text. And she called me out. She's like, okay, if you don't want to hang out with me, let's not do this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but it was just my daughter. And it was just, wait a minute, are we going for a 30 minute walk or not? And I, was a little uncomfortable when I got called out about it, but guess what? She made me realize if I ever did that with other people, right? Mm -hmm. Cause it's rude. If I'm going to go meet you for coffee, I'm not going to be on my phone. Right. And people do that nowadays. Mm -hmm. The phone has become a, a big thing in that it does. It lets anybody we're with know the priority is the ding dong that comes from here, the little ding, the ring, whatever that, that alert that tells me somebody else wants my attention. That is more important. That's a hard one to break. But how do you feel? I mean, let guys, you guys want to all come over to my house? Actually, Terry Ann has a great deck. I have a big deck too. Come on over. We can all hang out. We can all get on our phones. You guys want to do that? Let's do that. How about let's, let's sit here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but we're together. Oh, but we're together, Sherry. Look at that. We're sitting here on this beautiful deck, looking at the beautiful scenery, watching that sunset. We're together. What difference does it make? If no, we're not. We're watching our phone. This. Don't even. <laughs> oh, so it's not the same. I have just made this more important than you. I've just, and do, by doing this, I've said yes to this. And I've said no to you without the verbal words. I've said no. I've shown you which one of the two is more important. I also think maybe I'm boring you because you're on your phone. So my mm -hmm. husband and I, this is sort of funny, but not funny. We like to go out to coffee or lunch or something. And we're shocked how many couples will be on the phone when they're having coffee or lunch with, you know what I mean? Their significant other. Like, we don't do that. We're actually, even though we've been to dating or almost 31 years and stuff, we actually talk to each other. What an idea. Why did you come here with me if you're not going to talk to me? And then I've had some of my friends or people that I know say that their husband has date night every Friday, but he's always on his phone. So they don't feel like a priority. So you sometimes got to worry about that. When you're with clients, are you with the client or are you on the phone? Because you're saying yes to the phone and no to the person sitting in front of you. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about the yes and no, you don't even realize that. But you sometimes have to realize that. Right now, I have my phone turned upside down and turned down. And I know you have, what is it called? Somebody. Do not, did, did you know that your phone has a do not disturb feature? I know. And did you know that, um, what was I going to say? If you have Siri or who is it, you can tell them to put it on. You can talk to who is, 
Who's who's the lady at your house that you boss around? I don't want to say the A L X E A word because she'll hear me. <laughs> yeah, see? but you can boss people nowadays. We can boss around our little computers and tell it, put it on the whatever, put it on the. That's too funny. When my kids were little, we used to have spells so that they didn't know. Now we have to do it for our devices. That's pretty funny. <laughs> and I like uh, Pam says, no means no. Stop guilt rape wrapping me. Guilt raping me. Oh, that's an interesting word. I like that word. I do too, but I think maybe we could just say no and not use all that at them <laughs> because that might be a little harsh. <laughs> you know what? If somebody, but the thing is, have you ever had that person who won't accept your no? It doesn't matter how many times you say no, they won't let it go. How do you get away from that person? How do you get away from that situation? It's called walk away power, right? Hang up power. It's called Ooh. have a great day, but be nice about it, right? But, but they like might not saying. like me. They might they might get mad at me, Sherry. Mm -hmm. Sherry, if I say no and walk away, then I'm going to get mad at me. And I don't know if I can handle that. So I have some people in my life who are boundary violators. And so at first, when I started putting up clear boundaries, I go, they don't like me. They're being whatever. And my second dad, Gerald, who I used to talk to all the time before, unfortunately I lost him about seven months ago. But anyway, he said to me, Sherry, they didn't respect her like you. He said it in a diplomatic manner, but those people, did they respect and like you before that Terry Ann? Or are you just put on this God, plan it to do whatever they need you to do at the time they need you to do it. And even then, are you going to do it right? Those are the major, right? You'll have major boundary violators. Those people that want you to do for them, do it their way. And no matter what you do, you're trying to do, what is it called? So that they like you. Are they ever going to like you or love you? Can you do enough? <clears throat> These are things to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I like this saying, Terry Ann, are you the air traffic control of your time? Oh, I like that. So when you want to, when you want to say no, remember that you are the only one that understands the demands of your time. I like that. <clears throat> I was looking for some other phrases that I have here. Um, how are some ways that, that um, in, in the audience, what are some different ways that you guys say no? And how do you say no without feeling guilty? Or maybe you do feel sometimes, you know, okay, I feel guilty for saying no, but I'm still sticking with my no. Sometimes I have, um, you know, but that guilt is my own internal that I'm laying on myself. So I'm just curious. Um, I've got a, a list of different ways to say no. Uh, sometimes, sometimes the simple no, thank you for thinking of me, but I can't, or that's not for me, that kind of a thing. How about saying no and suggesting somebody else? You know, I'm not really good at that. You want to talk about your business and that kind of a thing. I'm not really good at that, but you know, my friend, Sherry Berger, I bet she could help you. Redirect a little bit. Um, you mean I shouldn't be the jack of all trade and the master of none? You know, I've tried that for many, many years. And while it might Everything that I got done for other people, they liked. It affected me because it put a great deal of chaos in my life. Because now I'm busy doing this and this and this and this and this. I'm not paying attention to the family, to the house. And it me. might not even be the things that you're good at or that you enjoy doing, right? Right. And if I don't enjoy it, you know what? I'm not going to do a good job. I'm not going to give it my best. Well, I can't say I always give my best whether I want to or not. That's part of that self-control that I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning how to say no and end it there. The first few, I got to tell you, the first few times that I said no and I ended the conversation there, I felt so guilty. 
over time, just like new habits, just like what I don't do. And that's go to the gym. You know, the first few times you go to the gym, Oh my gosh, I got to go to the gym. I got to do that. And the mindset of, Hey, I get to go to the gym, but if I'm going to the gym, that means I'm not here doing somebody else, some work for somebody else. It took a while to get over the guilt, but now I can pretty much say no quite often and not feel bad about it. Well, that makes sense, right? I like what Pam put out here, too. I've been praying for 36 hours in a day forever, and God says no all the time. <laughs> I don't really want 36 hours because my computer doesn't even like it when I run at 36 hours. Did you know that? <laughs> my computer likes to rest and reboot, and so do I. <sighs> You need to reboot just like your computer does. I like that. Well, I know everybody wished we had more time in a day, like 36 hours, but even Jesus, you know, he rested after creation. So I don't know. It's good to get bads in doing that. Maybe we should just utilize our time and our priorities more effective and efficient. Over time, would you say even going to the gym the first couple of times you don't like it, but then guess what? It becomes a habit. I remember I used to walk into the gym, I hadn't been for a minute, and I'd walk in. And I'd be like, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad I'm at the gym. And I was like, what is wrong with me? Now I like the gym because I had gotten in the habit of realizing Habits. how good I feel after the fact. So anyway, I Hi, Texas, hope everybody thank you for joining us. <laughs> who are you talking to? Texas just said, have a great day. She's got to step out. I just want to say bye, Texas. Thank you for joining us. That is my sister-in-law, Debbie. So, yes, from Texas. So that's great that she showed up. Um, you know, I want to thank everybody that showed up today. Huh? You know, one of the best ways that I learned how to say no and accept saying no, I read the book Boundaries. Mm -hmm. Wow. When I, re when, when I read that book, again, it took some time to become a habit. But it sure did change my perspective. And yes, everything goes back to perspective and mindset. Do you know the boundaries is not a one and done? That you should read it more than one time? Yes. You know you can have it on audio? And do you know that he is actually on a podcast? And do you know that you can get emails from him? I so do. You, as you're creating these habits, you can pull in more support than just reading a book. Sometimes we read a book or we listen to a seminar, but we have to change that behavior. And I know boundaries. I feel like I'm pretty good at boundaries, but not always. And you know what? We all have boundary violators in our life. So it, I feel like it's not a one and done, but that's a great place to start with boundaries. And, and I know that you work really, really hard on boundaries as well. Mm -hmm. But people, they're still boundary violators, aren't they? Yes, and they do it in sneaky ways. When you think you already got your boundaries, a boundary violator will find the little cracks to get in. So you got to be careful with that. And over time, just keep, would you say it's like going to the gym? Say Go no needs your, to become a habit. Go back to your boundary gym. Mm -hmm. It's okay how many times you go back. Because, right, none of us are perfect. I really want to thank everybody for being here today. I want to make sure people are staying in their priorities. Because if you remember, we talked about springing into action. We talked about those obstacles that are in our way. And the saying yes and saying no, the reason why we were talking about that today is we want to make sure those things that you're trying to spring into action are actually getting done because you might be saying no or yes to the things that are helping you move from here to there. Do you love my pun? <laughs> I love it. What do you have to say last, Terri Ann? <clears throat> it's okay to say yes. It's okay to say no. Just make sure it's the answer that you want to give, not that someone else is guilting you into. That are my closing words. And your final word is? Bye, guys. Enjoy this beautiful weather. We don't have any snow in Kansas City today. Just saying. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat>